No, we've been following along with uh, St. Paul's letter to the Romans. We will do this for some time now at this particular point in the church year. And I uh, can't help but think of what Paul says. Uh, oh, you men, without excuse, every, every one of you passes judgment. Uh, for by the standard by which you judge another one, um, you condemn yourself. That's not to say, well, live and let live, you know. Anybody can do whatever they want, because that's not the case. You know, we make judgments on right and wrong. God's blessed us. That's one of those gifts that are like his. You know, we have two powers of the soul, the ability to reason and free will. Of course, that second one gets us in trouble all the time. But, but here's the thing. Um, so we can judge things that are right or wrong, and if people are doing wrong, there's also, Paul gives us the idea of fraternal correction, but you do it for the love of Christ, not, not to point fingers at or criticize um, unseemingly. You know, the very fact, because what Paul says today um, is what I've kind of taken to heart myself. <coughs> I've mentioned to you many times, huh? You point the finger, there are three fingers pointing back at you. And that's basically what he's saying to us today, huh? You know, be careful how you judge, but remember, as you're judging, so you will be judged. And so if we can see the faults in others and know the right from wrong in the sense that those things that they do are wrong, and yet we're doing the same thing, we're worse than those folks that we're trying to, you know, that we were criticizing. Fraternal correction is another story. You know, you say to someone, you know, for the love of God, for the love of Jesus, you know, Maybe you can change your words. Think about this. What, what's the fraternal correction? Well, you go to the person one-on-one -on -one first, right? And then if you have, have a problem, maybe you have to take a, another a friend so that you have someone, maybe a, a third party that can be indifferent, okay? And if that doesn't work, you go to the church. He said, and if they, that doesn't even work well, then you treat them like a tax collector or a sinner. What did, how did Jesus treat tax collectors and sinners, though? He ate with them. He called them, you know, when the... When the Pharisees uh, were sitting outside uh, Matthew's home, like I told you. I think Matthew, the party that Matthew, farewell party basically, that Matthew throws for all his friends, and of course a lot of his friends were sinners too, you know, public sinners. But it was the last hurrah before he would go and go with Jesus to be his minister, to be his servant, to be his companion. And eventually to suffer death himself. But before that, you know, they throw this party, and of course the Pharisees say, look, you know, your, your master is eating with tax collectors and sinners. Well, Jesus didn't eat with tax collectors and sinners. He'd be eating alone every night. But because, he said, I didn't call the self-righteous, and that's the way they were being. They were being, you know, <laughs> Jesus doesn't miss wor mince words, you know, today, as I mentioned yesterday. You know, he's not a diplomat, that's for sure. You know, because, you know, when he says that, you know, woe to you Pharisees, and, you know, you pay tithes of mint and rue and every garden herb, but you pay no attention to the judgment and to love for God. Um, you should have done those things without overlooking the others. And then woe to you Pharisees, again. You seek places of honor in synagogues and greeting places and marketplaces, huh? Mm -mm. That's not what you want. And then a scholar lot should have kept his mouth shut, but he doesn't. Lord, teacher, when you, you insult them, you're insulting us as well. He says, woe to you scholars, you know. He doesn't, doesn't leave them up because he says that in woe to you also because you impose on people burdens hard to carry. But you yourselves lift, don't lift one finger to help them. See, if you impose something on somebody, then you have to live it out yourself. They weren't doing that. So what is it? It's uh, hypocrisy. That was the worst part of it. Um, that we have to have a sincere love for the Lord and sincere service for him and his people. You know, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your, your soul. You know, when Jesus says about, you know, you're like those whitewashed tombs. What was that all about? Well, you know, there were three uh, major feasts with the, the, the Jewish, in the Jewish calendar, you know, and on those special feasts, people had to go to Jerusalem. And so what they would do 
the Pharisees would make sure that all the tombs, because some of them were laying on the ground, like our graves, were whitewashed so that so heaven forbid that a person walk on somebody's grave because that would defile them or you know lean against the tomb that maybe is a tomb so they had to whitewash them so he's saying you know you're filled with filth but on the outside's that white whiteness nah you're dead in your heart and your and your spirit change your ways is what he's saying so today we ask God to help us change our ways by the power of His Holy Spirit what's the first thing we did this morning Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Lord have mercy. Forgive and pardon us, Lord, and help us to forgive and pardon those people that have offended or hurt us, huh? that we together may worship you in our loving service to each other.